So the first thing that you want to do is download Cakewalk by BandLab and install it. I just did a little search, Cakewalk by BandLab, download. I'm going to click right here. It's going to take me to the front page and I'm going to download it. It does install this BandLab tool, BandLab Assistant. And once you have that BandLab Assistant tools uh, set up, uh, you won't even have to do this anymore. Basically, you can go straight to the BandLab Assistant and you can update your Cakewalk or install it from there. And there's a few options under here, library sounds, mastering, they, if you wanna do mastering for your songs, uh, you can import a track into there, it's free. Uh, and you go to apps. So right in apps, you will see Cakewalk by BandLab. And there it is right there. Uh, I already have it installed, but what you would do in this case is press install. You'll walk through the steps, make sure you have everything checked. It'll ask you about, do you want to install the plugin, VST plugins, et cetera. Once you get that installed, then you're ready to go. Next step is opening it up and creating a new project. All right, when you open up a new project, first, uh, you might see your recent projects here, and you can see some of mine. Uh, I'm gonna go to new project. There are a few different templates. You can create your own templates if you want to, or you can just use the ones that are here. Typically, I may use the ones that are here for now, but if you have a certain setup, like you know, you always use an eight track, you know, with five vocals and piano, guitar, and drums or something, then you can say that as a preset and it should show up so that way you can just click on it for easy access. So templates are possible as well. For this case, we're gonna choose an empty project. So empty project is right here. I'm gonna click on it and it's gonna open it up. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I wanna do like blank slate so that way I can show you how to create a track, whether it be audio or MIDI. Right click in this panel right here, right click and you can insert an audio track. You also can go up to the insert and do audio track. Sometimes it's easier just to right click on your mouse, insert audio track. And we are also gonna insert a MIDI track, okay? Uh, and for the sake of this, I'm gonna insert an instrument track. And the reason why I'm doing these is because these are like the main options that you can do. So, Cakewalk comes with various different instruments. Uh, of course, you can always buy more, download free ones, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but it comes with your basic necessities so that way you can get the sounds that you need to create your song. I can just use this default TTS, which is made by Cakewalk. It's kind of like your general MIDI sounds. Uh, I'm going to choose that for right now. I'm going to create one track and I'm not going to worry about enabling it or anything like that. I'm just going to create that track. All right. So it does pop up. I'm not going to worry about doing anything with that right now. So the first thing is we want to record audio record audio. But before we get into that, we need to make sure we do the third step, audio setup. Before I can get any sound, I got to make sure that my audio is set up correctly. Go up to edit, go to preferences. You can also press P on the keyboard. Okay. And that'll open it up. Now there's a lot of things to deal with in here. So I'm going to try to keep this as brief as possible. If you need more information about any of these settings, definitely let me know in the comments and I can make some extra videos about Cakewalk by Band Labs. There's a lot of things that you can do in here. All right. So the first thing is the devices. Now, um, you can see I have a lot of devices in here. Uh, right now I'm using my X-Air mixer, my Behringer X-Air 18. So I'm using that as my interface. Um, you will need, well, necessarily, you won't need an interface if you're doing simple things, but if you're planning on recording like audio, vocal tracks, plugging up your guitar and stuff like that, you definitely need an interface. And I advise you to have one anyway. Um, you can get something that's like the Focusrite Scarlet uh, series. I have one of those. Let's have two inputs. You will see the link for that below. You can also get the XR18, which is made by Behringer. It's uh, like a $400, 400 to $500 mixer. It's not too much. Um, and then you can get something 
more reasonable, you can get like Behringer has a single like channel USB uh, interface. So, I mean, there's many different interfaces. Um, just find the one that works best for you and that has enough channels for what you're trying to do. So if you're like a guitarist who's plugging up a guitar and a uh, vocal mic at the same time, you want to play and sing, then you definitely need at least two inputs. On devices, here we go. So um, the first thing I want to look at is driver settings. Um, make sure that your playback time and master is set to whatever you want your interface to be. In this case, it's my X Air. I have it coming out of driver out one. Um, and then my record master, I have it coming out of one as well. So which is really channels one and two. Um, that helps. These are ASIO drivers, you know, it says ASIO. Uh, if you want to change it, say for instance, your device doesn't work well with ASIO, you can go to playback and recording and you can change it from ASIO to MME, which is 32 bit, which is like the standard version of when DAWs first came out, basically. Uh, then you went to the WD WDM, Windows Media, uh, or slash KS, so those are fine. And then uh, you have this Wasapi, which may work for you, but ASIO tends to be the best as far as latency and as far as getting the best sound. Um, so hopefully, you have an interface that accepts ASIO and that works with ASIO. Otherwise, you might have some complications. Doesn't mean you can't get the job done, but you know, best route, stick with ASIO for now. Definitely stick with ASIO. All right, so I have playback recording set up for ASIO. Driver setting is set to my X Air. Uh, I have my buffer size, which is down here. My ASIO panel will open up that and then I can adjust my Buffer size here, I got it at 512 samples. Um, none of this is important right now. Just know this one, this slide may or may not be available. Sometimes it's grayed out, but if it is available, you can use it. And what this does, it controls the buffer size, which affects your latency. So the faster you want your latency, which means the quicker you want it to respond, uh, the more easy it's going to be able to, to record everything in an accurate time. And, but it also is going to put more hindrance or pressure on your CPU system and your memory. So um, you might want to dial it back to safe. But if you get too close to safe, then you're going to have that latency. So like if I say, you know, hey, hey, <laughs> hi, hi, like hi has a delay in it. That's how it would happen. Um, and of course, it won't be that spread out. But yeah, so make sure you have that at a comfortable um, setting. You have to, you know, you got to play with it sometimes if you if you need to. Then when you go down to devices, you go back to input and output drivers. You want to make sure that they are set. I have all of them checked. Um, and the reason why is because normally we use any inputs. You may use multiple inputs depending on how many channels you're using. Uh, this board is an 18 channel mixer, so I can plug up multiple instruments and record separate tracks, which is great if you're doing multi-tracking, or I can just use like a microphone, which is what I'm using right now. Uh, just one mic going in. I can run my sound out of all of these different outs if I want to, like if I had to send, you know, this mic to a different channel or a different signal or some somewhere, different speakers, I can do all of that, those different things. So that comes in handy. So once I have that set up, I'm gonna apply it, press close. You'll know if you are able to do anything because if you're able to play it, even though I don't have anything here, that's a good sign because normally you'll get a message that pops up and says, I'm so sorry, audio device cannot start because blah, 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 blah. Uh, and when you get that type of message, that means that something is not set up right. Either your uh, configuration is wrong, like for instance, if I have this set for 4816, but my mixer, uh, which is my X Air settings are right here. You can see I'm on channel four. Um, it's set up where, you know, I can adjust it. And if I go in here to audio and I set it to 44, well, it's not gonna communicate with Cakewalk. And Cakewalk's gonna say, hey, you know, I'm set at 48, but your 
interface is sitting at 44. So I have, you have to make sure that you come back and change that and make sure that that's lined up. Fourth step, recording, audio, and MIDI. The reason why I created three tracks is because typically you're gonna use really two of these. Uh, you're gonna use the audio tracks and you're gonna use the instrument tracks. Here's audio. Now, I'm not gonna worry about effects. You can click on the collapse tool and minimize, maximize tool to open it up. On this side here, you'll see all of these goodies, your EQ and all of that. I'm not worried about that right now. Just gonna click on this to hide it. And this is what I wanna look at. So when you come down here and you're trying to get a signal, I'm getting a signal, but it's not what I want. I need to go to my input and there's an eye down here. There's an input and output. Output should be set to master. Input should go up here. And because I'm on the fourth channel, the way this works is left is one, right is two. Stereo is if you're using both of them. And then this is three and then right is four. So right as your driver in three. And now when I talk, you see I have both sides. They're equally um, proportioned, if that makes sense. So that way I can talk. And now I can record something and I know I'm gonna get a signal. To record, once you enable the record button, it's a little red dot here. You can press R on your keyboard or you can go up here and press R up here. I press the record button up here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I'm gonna play it back. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so it's something very simple. Um, I've recorded the audio track. That's done. Now, let me go to MIDI track. Now, I can record MIDI here. Uh, I don't have a controller plugged up or anything. Um, I'm gonna use a virtual controller. So, and, I, and if you've seen my video about how to make a beat with your keyboard, uh, you can do that. So go up to views, go up to a virtual controller, and let's do the computer keyboard. Okay, you can also click on it, or I can press the letters. All right, I'm, now none of this is gonna make sense. I'm not trying to make a song that's gonna be like a number one hit right now, uh, but I'm gonna record this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, all right, and hopefully it plays back. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, it plays back. I'm not worried about quantizing. I'm not worried about any of that. This is just trying to record, trying to keep it very simple because it's easy to get complicated. I might've said too much already. All right, the last step, recording to the instrument. Now to set up the instrument, basically depending on what channel you have it on. So let's go here and it's set to the virtual controller. I'm gonna do MIDI Omni. Uh, set it on MIDI Omni. So input, virtual controller, MIDI Omni, which means it's gonna come through all the channels. And then I'm gonna go back to my virtual controller. Let's do computer keyboard. And it's probably gonna be the same sound. It's the exact same sound as we did before. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, if I wanted to go change that sound, I can go in here and let's say I'm on one which I think is what it's set on. So you just click on it once with the left mouse button. And then I can come here and preset and I can set it to, uh, let's put it on fingered bass. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, that's it, that's it, <laughs> that's it. Oh, but what did it do now? Did you notice that it changed this channel right here? It changed track two, now track two is also feeding off of this track, which is the reason why I say you normally don't have to use this one. You could just use the instrument track. So I don't really need this track. Uh, I can just delete it. But if I wanted to keep this track, I can add another audio track like this. I'll drag it up. And 
I can put an instrument on this track. So you right click in the little dark gray space, insert soft synth, and I'll do the TTS as well, just to keep it simple. And now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna change this, left click, fingered bass, and I have it there. So now I go back to track three, and track three, I'm going to go down to my output, and I'm gonna change it to Cakewalk TTS 1, 2. So here's input, here's output, change it to that. And now this one, I can change back to piano if I want to. Okay, it's back to piano. And um, let's see if that works. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. First step that you want to do before you do anything is make sure that your notes are in tune the way that you want them in tune. Now, if you have auto tune, that's fine. I don't have auto tune on here. Um, but I do have a cool little plugin and this comes with Cakewalk. It is the free version, uh, the demo version. It is not the complete version. Once I said, you know, this is all about using the tools that come with the software. So uh, you can always upgrade later on. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to right click, press region effects. Of course, there's some other options, vocal sync, Melodyne, drum replacer. Go to Melodyne and create region effects. And then it's gonna bring up the editor, which will be down here. And then when you go down here, you can find those notes. And I can find out what note I was trying to hit. Ooh. So let me just solo this. Ooh. Okay, so I'm shooting for B, A, G, Mi, Re, Do is where I should be. Uh, let's see. And then I can look at how many cents I was off. Okay. Right now I am 80 cents sharp. No, 80 cents flat. Actually, I'm sorry. Um, uh, so I really want to be at B. So what I can do is I, and let me slow down again. So I can click on that note. It'll tell me the cents right here. All right. And then I can go ahead and just move it up where I want it, whatever note I want it to be at. Now, I don't try to get like right on zero because I'm not trying to get it to be perfect because sometimes perfect doesn't even sound perfect. Um, but I just want it to be shortly, flat. mainly I go for flat, just like slightly a little flat, uh, maybe like between eight, 15 cents, somewhere around there. So I've got it set at negative 10 cents, which is fine. And I'm on B, so I'm gonna go B, A, G is where I wanna go. So, and you just want to make sure that you, you make it sound natural as possible and make sure you keep in mind the vibrato or anything that you have going that's on the note because that will affect where the sense is. You may think that the note is off, but it really isn't off. It's just that you started off and then you got on the note at the end of the phrase or the end of the note as you keep holding it. Okay. All right. And that's fine. Um, once I'm done with that, I can go up here. I can right click on the track and go to region effects and then go to Melodyne and then go to what's called render. And what render what it does, it actually adds the effect directly to the track, um, which is fine because it, it writes it in that way. It's not, you know, tying up extra memory that you don't need to tie up. So now you can see it says Melodyne up there for the track. Uh, I'm not going to worry about doing this for all the tracks, but I just wanted to show you how to do that. So that's the first step tuning up, Make sure everything is in tune, whether you use an auto tune, whichever, make it sound natural unless you're going for that, you know, auto tune effect, you know, T-Pain effect or something like that. But try to make it sound natural, uh, but where it's, you know, in key. So now what I can do is so I can have a clean cut off. Um, I can cut this off. So let's say I'm going to crop it right here. Um, so you can. Highlight all the tracks if you want to. Hold down control and click on them at the same time. And you can right click and do split. Uh, I always make sure that non-destructive. 
uh, that makes sure that it gets everything. And then control again if you want to hold them all down. And then you can delete those. Another way you could have done it is you can just roll back. Okay. All right. So you can roll back. You could highlight all of them and then wait until you see two arrows and then roll back to where you want it to be. That way they all end at the same time. Okay. And you can notice that that first note I like held on a little bit long. So, uh, and I actually did a crescendo. Same thing here. Um, I'll leave the a little intro right here, so I won't cut that off. What I normally do is I try to do a, if you want like a clean cutoff for your vocals, uh, or you want it to like fade out, you can highlight them. Hold down control while you're highlighting them or clicking on them with the mouse. And then you'll see um, this, uh, if you click right there, you'll see uh, like a, it's like a fader basically. And I forgot what it's actually called, but it's like a fader. And then you can kind of fade the notes out or what it does is basically keeps it from having an abrupt cutoff. The next thing is dealing with EQ and compression. Now for EQ and compression, um, it's up to you, which one you want to do first. You can do compression first and you can do EQ first. Um, and there's a few different ways that I can do this on here. I can put compression on each individual track, or I can do a sub mix or a subgroup, which is what I like to do sometimes. Um, so what I'll do is I'll create, let me bring this over. So you might hear my daughter in the background making a little noise, but I'm gonna right click right here. And all I did was just drag that over and I'm gonna do an insert stereo bus. And I'm gonna name this bus, um, background vox okay background vox and the reason why i do this is because yeah i can apply all of these plugins to the individual tracks but if you're trying to like keep from using so much memory um it's good to like just put one track and then you can put a lot of your effects that you need for your background vocals on there now for the lead vocal normally i do everything and i and i focus on that like everything but on this channel so uh, and now in some cases I might have to put effects on individual channel and put it in the, the sub bus. But, um, for this sake, we're going to do this. So what I like to do is I switch this, this is set to master. I'm going to switch this to background Vox. Oops. I don't know. Background Vox. And so what that means is that everything that I do now, uh, I'll keep that one where it is. So everything that I do with these tracks is going to come out of that track. I'm going to click on the plus sign or I can right click either one or you can click the plus sign. Now they have vocal chains that are on here. Um, they have effects chains that you can download and presets. So if you want to do the presets, let me click it again. So click on effects chain preset. I had to shrink my little keyboard on the side because I think it was taking up the space and I don't know if you could see exactly what I was doing. So, um, yeah, so I got it now. I got it open up. Here's my chain effects and I'm going to go ahead and choose background vocals focus, click on it, open. And within this, it's going to have some of the effects already there. Now this is like a quick go to It's like your little vocal chain. If you want to do that and you can add extra effects to it if you need to. Um, and I can look what's on this chain. So first it starts off with compression. No, it starts off with, I'm sorry, starts off with equalizer. Uh, and wow, it's got to sound like a telephone. It took all the highs and lows and stuff out of that. Now I might not even go with this, but I can listen to it and see what it sounds like. Um, so let's see what it sounds like first with this chain. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it definitely does make it sound like lo-fi, uh, with no bottom, or no high end for the sake of this, I'm going to show you how to do everything by yourself without using these chains. So I'm going to delete that and I'm going to go to plus and let's say I want to start with compression first. Sonatus compressor, um, compressor, but it's set on default. And all I want to do is I want to listen to, Ooh. 
want to listen to what the threshold is like where the loudest note peaks at or where it hits at so everything is like right around this between negative 12 and negative 18 decibels so i can set the threshold down and i might want to bring it down to like negative 12. All right. now if you're not sure about what compression does um that's for another tutorial because I don't want to get into it. I mean, there's a lot, a lot, lot of these plugins and stuff, a lot of things that you can do with effects. But basically what it does is it allows you to um, maintain the sound. So that way if you have certain peak points in your vocals, like if I'm singing real soft, like, you know, da, 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 da. no, I'm sick, singing real soft. I want that to come through at a certain level. And then when I, I might have some parts that are real soft and some parts that are real loud. So what compression does allows you to get a more even mix within your vocals or even level within the vocals. So that way that the, the parts that peak more, they're brought down and the parts that are real low are brought up. Okay. Where they meet in the middle. Um, so I'm going to put, I'm going to put the decibel level. Let's try like 2.5 to one ratio. So that means for every 2.5 decibels a level, it would be reduced to one decibel level. Um, so, and you can kind of tell here that it's like going to reduce it some. So let me listen to it. Ooh. All right, uh, there's a limiter on here, and I can keep that on for now. But my attack, I can lower my attack. If I lower it, that means it's going to uh, attack a little quicker. And if I do it more stressed out, and vocals tend to be, I mean, you can play with this. It's like one of the things you just have to play with to see which one sounds better to you. Uh, I'm going to keep it like the attack at 12 milliseconds. And the release, you, can, you might want it to be fast. You might want it to hold a little longer. Let's try holding a little longer and see what it sounds like. Ooh. Okay, all right. So now there are some presets in here that you can use. I know I said up here there wasn't any, but there are presets down here. I'm used to it seeing up here. So if you want to do the uh, vocal soft, like I can do vocal soft, and that's 14, uh, 7 to 1 ratio. The knee is here. You can adjust the knee if you want more smoother. If you want it hard like that, you can make it that way. But if you want more smoother attack or more smoother um, transition-wise, then you can do it that way. All right, so I've got compression. And let's say I'm good with that compression. I can go back and tweak it. Now, there's some other compressions that you can add. Uh, there's a multiband compression and what that does is like focuses on those key areas like the the low end the mid the the high mids and the highs and then I can just boost those levels and I can like basically solo those levels uh, for each of those ranges and figure out which one needs to go up which one needs to go down uh, that compression is normally used in the pre-mastering process when you're getting ready to put it on CD are you getting ready to upload it to your distribution company? Sorry, I bumped the mic, uh, whichever. But um, so we're not going to worry about that right now, though. Um, so what I'm going to do is go to band one and I'm going to do high pass and you see it cuts it off. Uh, so like right around 40 hertz, uh, it rolls off and I may want to increase that. I might want to take it up to maybe 60. OK, uh, 61, that's fine. Um, move two over some. All right, and I can just listen to that before I make any changes, extra changes. So, start over again. Ooh. Okay, so this step is called subtractive EQ. And subtractive EQ is basically what I'm doing now. I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna find points that I feel need, like I, I need to get rid of. Now, I might do this individually for each track, but for now, I'm just gonna show you on the bus, but really I would go through and I would do it for each track because each vocal part is different as far as the uh, tonality and the frequency range that it's in because I'm singing different notes. Um, but for the most part, I'm recording everything in the same environment. I'm in my little apartment 
and it is not treated well. I don't have pads or anything like that. I got this little blanket behind me, which you can't see, but so I'm going to do what's called a sweeping motion. I'm going to find a frequency. I'm going to start with four. Um, Q is basically how sharp your curve is. Basically when I increase the gain, um, you can see it's a sharp point, but I, if I reduce the Q, then it makes it more of a rounder point. So we want more of a triangular shape and we're going to try to go all the way in to 24 and I'm going to try to boost this as much as I can and I'm going to sweep back and forth. The way I do this is I just click right here in the frequency part and then I can sweep back and forth between something that I feel that does not need to be in this recording. So I don't like that frequency. I feel like that's annoying. It's a boxy sound. It's like 400 hertz. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip that down some. So I've got my compression and I've got my EQ. Uh, I can add another EQ and I can do a little bit more. Uh, let's do the para EQ, para EQ. All right, so yeah, it has some presets in there. And let's say I wanna do a high boost and let's see what that sounds like. Ooh. What's important to note is that um, if you notice that I'm, I'm still not peaking, which is good. My levels are still pretty good. I'm not peaking, which is what I don't want. Sometimes when you add extra effects on, uh, they can mess, you know, mess, they can raise a gain in your signal. So uh, this pair of EQ, you know, that, that was nice. And it just comes down to what are you going for in your background vocals? Sometimes background vocals, I mean, as just that background. Uh, but it depends on what kind of recording you're going for, because sometimes the background vocals might be the more dominant part and you might want to, you know, stretch them out. Uh, you might want to do like stereo processing or stereo imaging on it. Uh, so ideally I might record each of these parts three, four or five times and then spread them all apart, uh, pan them different ways so the way it gives more of a stereo image. Uh, some songs, the background vocals are fat, like they're in your face, and the lead vocals is like right in the middle. You hear it, it's clear, it sounds good, but it's not as big as the background vocals. And in other cases, you might want the background vocals way in the back. So it just depends on what image you're going for in your mind, um, you know, like the old school way of, you know, the lead singers up front, three background singers are right behind them. So then you might want your mix like that. Or you might be the person that says, hey, my background singers, I want them on the side of me. And I'm in the middle and they're on the side of me. Okay, so and if you're going for that way, you can mix your sound that way where it sounds just like that. So I'm gonna go down to reverb and I'm gonna go to the sonatist reverb. I'm just the main thing I'm gonna be using today. Um, and then you can go to presets. They have some, you got aux, so you got this one. Like I, I like the stereo slapback, but let's just do short and sweet for now. Um, okay, so a cool thing about the features on this particular uh, reverb is that you can adjust EQ, so you got a low cut and high cut uh, filters, you can use that, you can do pre-delay, you can change the room size, like maybe I want it to be a bigger room, um, maybe I want it to be wetter. Uh, so if I want it to be wetter, I can take my dryness down. So dryness is going to be your natural volume of the track, or basically the, the dry track. So maybe I want to reduce that. Uh, early reflection, I can adjust that some. Uh, I can bring it down. And reverb, maybe I want to add more reverb. Maybe I want to change the width of it. I can go all the way up to 200%. Um, tail means that it's coming on the tail. So if I do that, ooh... At the end of the, ooh, that's when you'll hear the reverb. Or I can take the tail off and you'll hear the reverb all the way through. Ooh. And that might be cool if I'm going for that effect uh, and I want it more in the background. I'm going to put it back on the tail. I like the stereo. I'm going to put a little bit more dry back in there. And let's put a little bit more early reflection. Ooh. 
Okay, and I, I kind of like that so far. Um, I can add a delay to it. Uh, let's do the sonatus delay. And once again, let's go over to one of these presets and let's do a... Let's see what dark and long sounds like. Okay, so I know immediately that's not going to work. And so the reason why it's doing it is because it has what's, what's called feedback. Um, so I can take the feedback off, which is what I normally do. And I don't really want no crossfeed. Uh, Mix-wise, that's fine. Um, I've got the 85 set. And this is set to, okay, so it's going to do the left twice. It's going to do the right once. Let's do them both. See what that sounds like. Okay, you're not going to really hear a difference, but it does add like an extra something to it. Let's try two, three on both sides. Bypass it. And I can switch it up. I can change it on one side. I can add more of it. Take the mix out. I can add just half some of it. You get a lot of uh, consonants like me because I pronounce everything really well. Um, uh, the sibilance, sibilance like that. Uh, you need a de-esser. I just pulled up two different templates for uh, a vocal processing chain for this lead vocal part. And here is one. This is like lead vocal setup one. And here's lead vocal setup two. Um, they're both on there. You should be able to find them. Um, all you have to do is just click the plus sign and you might hear a lawnmower in the background uh, click the plus sign and then you can go to the um, vocal chain FX chain and preset and then go to vocals and then I use lead vocal setup one and setup two uh, this is just a foundation I might have to tweak some of this stuff in here but this is a good way to start off so let's put on lead vocal one and see how that changes it tease my lips in the morning yeah tease my lips i definitely made it a lot brighter and added a lot more treble to it uh i can you know reduce some of the treble uh you can hear the compression i mean it does bring the overall volume up too as well so let's see tease my lips in the morning yeah now, as far as the EQ, it does raise the it raises the highs up and it raises the, the mid range a little bit. If for some reason I feel like that that is getting too loud because I don't want it to peak and I want to have some wiggle room because I got more effects to add, I could always come here and reduce the output uh, just a slight bit, and then that will adjust the effects in the shit. Tease my lips. In the morning. And then there's also an input yeah. and output here too as well. Tease so I can do it here. In the morning. Yeah. Cozy vocal plate. Let's try that. See what that sounds like. Tease my lips in the morning. Yeah. Tease my lips. In the morning, yeah. Tease my lips. In the morning, yeah. These are some tips to help you get into mixing. Now, this is not going to like fix it all for you in one day. Sometimes mixing takes a lot of patience, a lot of time. With anything that you do, you have to have patience. Um, you might work on a song. And you might have to come back two weeks later and work on it because your ears get fatigued. So just make sure you're taking your time, get you some rest. Uh, and when you're working on it, make sure you listen on different devices, listen on different, you know, speakers, different speakers, listen on different headphones, change it up, get some little cheap headphones, put those in, see what it sounds like, you know, because you'd be surprised the changes in the mix. 
to export our bounds to tracks. What I want to do is I want to highlight all of these tracks uh, and I'm going to press click on my first track and double click and it should highlight all of them. I'm going to go up to tracks. I'm going to go to bounce to tracks. And then I'm going to very important that you have these settings set a certain way because there are different options for the preset. You can do master mix, no automation, no effects, ignore the mute solo, all uh, buses, entire mix, raw tracks, what you hear, live input, etc. I normally do master mix or I do all ignore the mute and solo. Um, for now, I'm going to do all. Entire mix. Do I want the tracks, buses, hardware, outputs, or the entire mix? I want the entire mix and I want it in stereo. Do I need any of these options? I normally don't check any or uncheck any of these options down there. I just keep them where they are. And I'm going to press OK. And it's going to put it on track five. OK. All right. It did it. And I can see what we got now for now. I'm just going to solo this channel just so I can hear this channel by itself. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. All right. I got my track is done. Now, of course, you always want to save your work. Make sure you save your work first before you get along this far along. Control S on the keyboard. Uh, and I'm going to say test um, YouTube. I don't know. I I'll name it that for now. All right. So I've saved the project. So here is the next part of step five. We've got the tracks together. We've recorded everything. Uh, we've got sound. Everything sounds good. And now we're ready to export it. Now, you don't have to do the bouncing to track option. You could just highlight all of these and export them right out. Uh, it just depends on which way you want to do it. Sometimes I do it, I do it both ways, but sometimes I do bounce the track. Like if I want separate mixes, um, I do it that way. But if you just know everything sounds good the way it is, you can press export up here, or you can go to file and press export and audio. And there's other options to export it as OMF. OMF is good if you're going to transfer it to a different software. Like if you're working on Cakewalk by BandLab, but the person that you're working with is using, I don't know, Cubase or Nuendo or some other software, then you can put an OMF file. Uh, standard MIDI file is good if you're going to like pop it in the keyboard or you just want MIDI tracks. So all you can do is a track template, which is what I was talking about before. So like if I have this set up and I say, hey, I got 16 tracks on here and I've got my drums on 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I can say there's a track template and every time I do a new song, I can open it up and it's already set up for me, but I'm going to do audio. Okay. And I'm, I don't know where it's going to save it. I'm not going to worry about it. Save it. It's going to save uh, in my audio drive, but I'm going to change where it saves. I'm going to put it in my music. Um, and entire mix is set. I could do clips. I can do some other options, but I'm doing entire mix. I'm keeping it in stereo. Uh, you can, Revert it to 44 and 16 if you want to, or you can do that later on, whichever. I'll keep it 32 for now. Um, and my preset, same thing. You know, what do you want to hear? Do you want to do uh, what you hear live? Do you want the no automation, no effects? Do you want the raw tracks with no effects or anything? No EQ or nothing like that? Or you want all ignore the mute? I'm going to do master mix this time. I'm going to say this is the master mix. And you notice that it automatically set it to 4416. I'm going to say test, export, 